Nice. Nice. I need to delete the other one now. Yeah. That's good. Taylor, take those photos onto Facebook and Twitter and then let's sort the um, features out, yeah? Hong Kong's freedom, civil liberties were meant to be maintained for 50 years after 1997. But we've just seen a much more heavier handed sort of crackdown on uh, freedoms and civil liberties in Hong Kong. Hong Kong Free Press emerged from the Umbrella Movement, pro-democracy protests, in 2015. It's a direct response to the dwindling press freedoms in the city. I was a teacher for a long time in Hong Kong, you know, saving my money, paying off debts, but I had a blog. And um, I noticed that a lot of stories there were getting traction. I decided to sort of upgrade that um, in, into some sort of news outlet. The tools to set something up like this have been democratized and I think we can have just as big a voice as the biggest news outlets. It would be nice to do Carrie Lam as a headline. Don't worry, like, I, I, I'm on it, yeah. We're all just uh, getting things ready, I guess, for the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen crackdown and how that's marked in Hong Kong, which is going to be huge. And I feel it's something we can probably lead on, owing to, I think, the status of a, a lot of the other press in Hong Kong who may not cover it as enthusiastically, perhaps. For sure, Tiananmen is one of the three T's that many media will already avoid, Tiananmen, Tibet, uh, and Taiwan are sensitive issues. Um, but we're structured from the ground up from the beginning to, you know, uh, resist any of those kinds of problems. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Bloody hell. Um, maybe, Holmes, you kick off with what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks anyway, and stuff that maybe we don't know about. There is the uh, commemorative events for June 4th. We will basically have the live blog piece, which yeah. is a page, and the, sh the, the pre-write, which is continually updated, which is the other piece. So I got Todd Darling and Dan Garrett who are doing photos. Then I thought we would have you pre-write. When do you want to publish the pre-write? As soon as it kind of kicks off, so we're first. OK, epic couple of weeks. Hi, bloody hell. Let's leg it, man. We are about an hour and a half away uh, from 8 pm when the Tiananmen Massacre vigil. Over 100,000 people will be gathering in Victoria Park, one of the few places on Chinese soil where people can mark uh, the Tiananmen Massacre. Uh, there are signs and placards against the uh, looming extradition bill, which will certainly uh, be bolstering the uh, turnout tonight, I'm sure. Uh, stay with us in the next hour or two, and we'll be back on Facebook Live with a uh, live running commentary. Yapanya 
we do a roundup of all the major print newspapers in Hong Kong the day after to provide our readers with a, a sense of the media landscape as it is in Hong Kong. So first of all, you have Apple Daily, a newspaper with pro-democracy leanings. The slogan here is Vindicate June 4th, Justice Will Prevail. Now, on the other end of that spectrum, we have uh, Wen Wei Po and Ta Kong Pao. They are financially backed by the China Liaison Office. So we usually say Beijing-backed newspapers. There is not a single mention of the vigil at all. Other media outlets have pressures that HFP do not. I think the the issue of press freedom in Hong Kong is far more treacherous than in the mainland China. In the mainland, you know how the battle lines are drawn. In Hong Kong, there's more of a facade to things. In Hong Kong, we don't have sort of news outlets that are churning out completely fake stories. The big problem when it comes to truth and accuracy is that they tend to be either outright owned by China or they're run by tycoons who have business interests in the mainland. Almost everybody, it seems, is touched by, if not outright censorship, but self-censorship. And that's sort of the, 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 the cancerous thing that's been spreading in Hong Kong for some years. Rather than having one uh, rich benefactor, we rely on a lot of small donations from a lot of people. Self-censorship is a big issue, but we try to fill in the gaps. Stuff that other, other newspapers aren't covering, we try to kind of cover that and, you know, give a platform to that kind of news. It seems like there is a continuous timeline of events getting worse and worse and worse in terms of Hong Kong's politics. If this extradition agreement passes, anyone physically in Hong Kong will be subject to mainland Chinese rule because they can trump up reasons to prosecute you in mainland China and ask the Hong Kong government to send you back to mainland China for trial. Uh, this is a silent march. Uh, organized uh, by the legal profession uh, and mainly for the legal profession to express our uh, deepest concerns regarding the extradition bill. People's powers matter. We have to believe if we have sufficient number to, to go to the streets, uh, Beijing will have to listen. We call upon this government to withdraw the extradition bill. This is the clear and I believe the unanimous belief of the legal profession. This momentum is it's going. People want to really do something to safeguard the, their own freedom. I think this is a good place to cover politics in the sense that although it's a very difficult situation that we're in, we try to sort of make some impact with the little resources that we have. Lin Zheng, Yu Min Wei Ding, you are our enemy now. Why did you come to Hong Kong? The pro-democracy lawmakers are uh, having a vote of no confidence in Chief Executive Carrie Lam. It's not going to pass, but they are trying to make a symbolic gesture. Well, it's about 20 minutes to three. Today it could be 
biggest protests, certainly since 2014, possibly since 2003. We've seen placards with no China extradition. There's Carrie Lam, some with just the word emblazoned liar over it, as we observe all these different liberal progressive pro-democracy groups uniting uh, against the bill. What's the atmosphere? What have you been seeing as people have been going past? Quite a lot of uh, people who um, are marching for the first time. All the parents are taking their kids with them to join this march. So I think it's very, very touching. Well, the biggest march I can remember already, just coming out of the MTR, get an impression of it being massive. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, sick. Is it the first time you've come to an extradition protest? Yes. Yeah. Why are you here today? What are your motivations? So this is very important to the Hong Kong, um, uh, this generation and next generation. This is Chris Jane of Hong Kong Free Press. Um, protesters have been gathering at the Legislative Council uh, at the end point of the march. Uh, the special unit have arrived to are armed with riot shields, They're just arriving now. The police are pushing recorders away again to stop us from filming the process. The police are saying, um, get ready for um, some sort of action. They're saying stop filming, go! The police just charged into protesters, reporters, telling us to go. So 19 people arrested. So 19 arrests and, and yeah. they've made a show of Weapons confiscated and stuff, I see. It's been a sleepless long night. Shirley Yam of the Journalist Association is looking at whether actually any police stepped over the line, but yeah, temper's frayed and you go well into the night and journalists will be between protesters and police, so it can get chaotic. Having said all that, like, it's been huge. Probably the biggest sort of uh, impact and traffic I can remember. And you see all the pro-Beijing press today, you know, either burying it or framing this as, you know, insignificant. Um, yeah. So I posted this at 5.23 a.m. Expressing a little bit of anger with the treatment of reporters by the police. I got a little bit of prepper spay in my arms. But one thing I didn't realize, I only realized after looking at the photos again, you can check here, this gun, if they decided to use rubber bullets last night, then I will be directly in front of the fire line. And during the whole course, they have been pushing reporters in a tougher than usual way. So it was a little bit of a warning for reporters as well that were fought at the moment. historic march because that that was by far i think the largest in history but um we wake up this morning and government standing firm 
no changes, it will be, you know, run through the legislature. The bill will resume its second reading on the 12th of June. And we appeal to members of the Legislative Council to discuss and debate on a bill in a calm and rational manner. I hope that similar appeal will go to organizations in society which may be planning other uh, actions, including perhaps some radical actions. So that is, that is Being a political reporter in Hong Kong gives you plenty of opportunities to be cynical and pessimistic. Of course I'm worried. Like I see all of these things every day. Uh, what's even more worrying than encroachment by the Chinese government is the fact that increasingly absurd things are being taken as a new norm. It's very hard to tell whether it's considered to be safe to be working in Hong Kong. The public articles that we write will be monitored, but will it translate into some kind of physical threat against my loved ones, families? I don't know yet. I think it's about trying to use police power to have political repression to the people who would like to participate in protests. Uh, I don't want to see any such kind of things anymore. In the... It's been you know, disheartening to watch freedom of expression decline in Hong Kong. But if anything, that's all the more reason to document it. But do you think people have lost confidence in uh, civil disobedience and protest as an effective tool. Do you think that people have lost confidence in, in protest? This uh, using a law as an instrument of suppression had been there for some years already. Uh, when you look back at you know, what happened in Hong Kong over the, after the Embraer movement, it's a revenge against all activists, especially younger generation. And then with the extradition bill passed, it would be from rule of law to rule by fear because then it had a chilling effect of anyone in Hong Kong. And I think that's exactly what the Communist Party uh, want. So we, we are asking people of not to give up because we, we still can fight back, I believe. Yeah, we didn't see this coming. They've cancelled the legislative uh, debate on this because lawmakers logistically just can't get near the legislature. So all sections of society just normal, wouldn't normally speak up or aren't allowed to speak up, are publishing statements, signing petitions. You know, we're seeing strike action, which is so rare in Hong Kong. I, don't, I, know, I just don't recall seeing you know, hundreds of businesses close. I think the police are analysing what they should do. And the poster says as well, they're kind of like playing a chess game. 
I, I, I only see two uh, suspects being forced on the ground, and the uh, police officer were very agitated, and they say they were arrested, pointing me to a scratch on his hand. Big deal. Chris Chain of Hong Kong Free Press. Uh, as you can see, the protesters are trying to put order on the tear gas canisters. You can feel the pain in your eyes, in your face. <laughs> Another several canisters fired. <laughs> but the protesters are not leaving. This police is closing in. More tear gas. Around 10 police officers are pointing guns at journalists where there are no protesters behind us. Well, police seem to be gearing up again down there. Armed police with uh, rubber bullets, bean bags, clearing protesters over the last couple of hours, uh, firing volleys of uh, tear gas around uh, Harcourt Road, Timmate yeah. Avenue, Lungwo Road. Didn't expect it would uh, get this hairy. Got a bit spicy. I feel bad for Chris. He was getting tear gassed in real time. I never asked him to, but um, very much just like history repeating, like uh, the Umbrella Movement, albeit 79 days condensed into one day. This is what it looked like, you know, at the end of um, of those protests. So uh, yeah, very intense and. I imagine because of uh, the police action today, we're going to see uh, more protests over the coming days. It's not going to particularly stop. I felt it's right that journalists reporting on Hong Kong should have a very deep engagement in the fate of Hong Kong. I hope that people can see that we care. What will happen in one, two, three or four years? Are they going to shut us down? Are they going to take away our newspaper registration? Will we see overt censorship in Hong Kong? After 14 years, this is home to me. I think it's, yeah, it's a city worth fighting for. I'm probably the most pessimistic person in the room, but I guess the good thing about Hong Kong is that it has a very vibrant civil society. Whenever the government does something, there is a big response. When the public's more informed about what's happening in the world and they can make more informed decisions about how they want to you know, run their government. So press freedom is you know, important, particularly in a climate of declining freedoms.